Recreation meeting here, commission meeting here at 7.02. Um, can we just go around the table and introduce ourselves for the minute taker? John Furno. Jennifer Hudson. Hannah Furno. Ryan Hogan. Tim Bonin. Jim Dusha. Pam Schwartz. Pam Schwartz. Okay, thank you very much. So first on the agenda is a discussion about pickleball in the municipal gym and specifically um, tape on the gym floor. Um, I know when we discussed this last time, we had, the commission had uh, suggested we find alternatives to the tape on the floor. Um, I know I did a quick Google search and saw a couple different products that said they could be um, put on and off in 20 minutes. Um, I was wondering if you guys have, have anything for us or? Did you get this? I do have this. Okay, I've, seen, sure. I've seen the survey. We can talk about that in a minute. Yeah, um, Dick apologizes for not being here. He had COVID. So he's not feeling too well. So we're here to represent uh, the uh, Sunshine Club, the Senior Center, Council on Aging, <laughs> Mature Citizens of Thank Douglas. <laughs> I don't want to say senior citizens. But so, um, in order to be ready for tonight, he did the survey of some of the surrounding areas, and as you can see in his notations, <clears throat> some of them have indoor pickleball court facilities, and most of them are using tape. And uh, we um, wanted you to be aware that this is not just our thoughts and um, process of how to outline the courts. And uh, references are that they keep them on for a year, maybe two years, but um, the consensus of his uh, findings is that uh, the tape doesn't incur any damage to the floor surface. Um, it's pretty adhesive. It's not going to come off with kids running all over and causing them to trip or slide or get stuck to anything. We've been playing on it now for a while, and uh, we don't have any complaints when anyone playing. We did have a complaint only when we used that portable court system because it was very slippery on the floor and too dangerous. You could incur injuries that way. The, uh, the uh, play time, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sundays, has a great outpouring of interest and enthusiasm. It is limited no more than 24 in there at a time. You have to sign up for this in advance. And it's limited to the people who have signed up with Dick in advance because they were interested in playing. It's just not walk in off the streets and can play. And uh, we understand the rules and have been trying to abide by cleaning up, wearing um, non-street sneakers in there to protect the floor. We're aware of that. Uh, the interest and the enthusiasm seems to generate the thought that it's something that um, uh, the adult community in Douglas needs and wants. They want some recreation, which there isn't a lot of at the time being. This is a, a way for them to keep active, keep mobile, especially when we talk about the more mature citizens. Okay. Uh, so we're willing to cooperate in any manner, shape, or form to keep this thing alive and going because the interest is there. And uh, there seems to be um, an evolution of this all over the place, you know, as you watch it on top. Did anybody see Pickled with Steve Colbert a couple weeks ago? Hysterical. But anyway, um, it is becoming a um, a big athletic type of activity for all ages, but definitely seniors can play. So um, we're here to represent that part of the community as well. So I hope that you got a chance to look this over to see the you were able to contact anybody on these numbers to see if there's any more input on to their concerns with using the tape. So. I didn't really, be bluntly honest, we're here to be honest, right? Yeah. I, I, oh, absolutely. I, I, okay. I didn't really find this all this applicable. Just about all of these towns are significantly larger than Douglas. I'm guessing have multiple gyms. In May, there's nothing on here whether they're playing basketball on here as well, right? To compare us to Newton or, or Andover or Lexington, those are huge, very wealthy communities that have multiple gymnasiums. I don't think it's comparable to what they're doing. And they may be playing pickleball on one court, but the problem we have here is we're trying to play basketball on any other. Um, so, you know, I, I've tried to, to work with you guys. I've tried to be as flexible as possible, right? Um, Dick wanted to do it. I said, let's go ahead and do it. I, I think he told us 10 to 12 Douglas seniors would play. I think that's great. And we said, go ahead and do it one morning a week. 
He said, well, the tape's a little bit an issue. Let's see how it goes. I said, okay, we'll give it a six-week trial and see how it goes, okay? So I did notice when I washed the floor twice over the last weeks that the tape had started to fray. I also have been in touch with people who know more about this than I do in the construction community, and they say that type of tape, it starts to adhere on the floor permanently after two to three weeks. Okay. The other issue is we're having is there's confusion on the court. There's lines all over the place. I can speak personally from my practices that uh, people think they're out of bounds and they're not, right? It's a blue line, it's a navy blue line and a dark black line. It's hard to tell the difference between the two. Um, I personally, 20 years coaching experience, have never played on a court where there's tape lines on there. Now, I think the easy solution, well, the solution would be to paint lines on the court. The problem is that's probably 15 to 20 grand to sand it, refinish it, and repaint it. So, I don't know what the solution is, right? Uh, so Dick asked he's for some space in the back room. I said, sure. I got him a key. I said, call me. We'll find some space in the back room. He just decided to take over two shelves in the back room and stuff went on with, that was on there and now it's gone missing somewhere. I'm not saying it was taken. I don't know what happened to it, but it's not in that back room. Dick mentioned the possibility of adding out of towners. I said, well, that's a little bit step forward. Let's discuss that with the Recreation Commission, right? And next thing I know, there's an ad in the paper looking for out of towners to come play which really wasn't approved by us or anything. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. Put it uh, out in the paper. They put it out in the paper yeah, without any discussion of this, this board or anything. So you guys, I, you know, I feel like I've been giving, 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 and pushing, 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 right? I, I thought we, were, we as a commission were pretty clear that we were looking for alternative solutions at the last meeting. Dick has emailed me four times. Each of my responses to Dick has been, Dick, thank you for the information, but I believe the Recreation Commission was looking for alternative solutions, right? I, I don't feel it's my responsibility as the basketball president to find an alternate solution. I did a five-minute Google search and found three or four different products that say they can be put down and picked up in 20 minutes. Whether that's true, what the quality is, I can't say. But my area of expertise is basketball, and I don't think as we begin games this weekend, those lines can stay down there. That would just be my opinion. I'm happy to hear from the other members as well. But. Yeah, I know when we left last time, we had talked about trying to find the alternative measure of some type of lines. I did go down there today because I hadn't seen them, and I can see where the confusion for the kids would come in. So, I mean, my thought is if we can try to come up with a solution. I love the fact you guys are doing this. This is great for the community, for the, uh, uh, what was the word? Mature citizens. Mature citizens, because I'm almost one. I'm very close to being one as well. So, um, and I love the fact that you guys are doing this. I just think we need to work a little harder and figure out the lines, what we can do in the long term. You know, I, I, that was one of my questions. When's the next time the gym floor was going to be done? And how much does it cost? And we answered half of that. Uh, so, you know, if the, I don't know if the basketball program could afford to do it itself. We yeah. would certainly be happy to contribute to the town. The last time we did it, it was between twelve and $15,000. Mm -hmm. That was eight or nine years ago. A um, little bit of a tricky wicket is that floor does not have a lot of sandings left. So each time, you s each time you sand it, that's less life it has. Last time we did it, the guy who just did it said we thought we might have one more or so. So that's how the other long, problem. How long ago was that? Eight or nine years ago. So typically you sand every 15, I want to no, say. Please. You know, now maybe it can be painted without being sand. I, I, that's beyond my area of expertise. Mm -hmm. I, I, the one time we, anytime the schools have done it or we've done it here, it's been sanded and painted, to my knowledge. Um, you know, that's the long-term, probably permanent solution is put some sort of tan or white pickleball lines down. That would be less confusing. There's volleyball lines similar to that down there, and those don't cause a problem. So, so you would not be objective to painting them where we can find um, some information about can they be painted without sanding and look at that cost. Now, also a question. This is a municipal building, municipal uh, gymnasium. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in the town budget that would help offset the cost of doing the floor work? We get five thousand dollars a year. Yeah. But Three thousand dollars a year. But, Sorry. But, that's, but what about as a municipal building? 
that may be a big question. You come to the finance committee to, uh, you could put it on the, um, what am I looking for? The capital committee, you can present that before the capital committee, see where it is with the other priorities in town. <clears throat> with enough support, you could put it on the warrant yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. You know. I would suggest going through the committee process yeah, first before yeah, I would too. that would be a combative step, but one you could certainly take. Combative might not be the right word. Okay, so that'd be a, a long term outlook, you know, sure. that's not going to happen <laughs> next yeah. week or so. Um, so, John, when you took a look at it, yeah. uh, what would be the major? the biggest negative things you saw. Well, I just think the kids are confused on which line is for my out of bounds and my three-point shot or, you know, and I'm not a basketball person. Is that open? At yeah. all, yeah. you know. These kids but, practicing their big But, uh, you know, I can see where the confusion would lie with the, with the younger kids and maybe even the referee on it. He's got to make a quick decision on a call and, you know, blows a whistle when he shouldn't. We're, we're going through the same thing with the adults. Uh, yeah. 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 Because we see the black line yeah, and sure. we think of that as out of bounds and we hit it within there and we're called out of bounds. Yeah. And uh, is there a referee when you guys play? Or how does that work? We ref ourselves. Okay. People yeah. aren't playing. Yeah. Okay. You wish there was a referee. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Some bad calls out there. <laughs> but the, the tape seems to be. Staying, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I imagine it's going to fray over time. We don't know how long it will take. Uh, it would be nice if we could find that out, and there's only one way you're going to do that. Find out how long that will last before we replace it. It's younger kids that are playing basketball there, right? Using it for basketball? Kindergarten to eighth grade. Kindergarten to eighth grade. So their focus to me would be more on playing the game, the rules of playing the game, making a shot, um, I think you ought to come down here on a Sunday afternoon and see when the referee makes a call. Parents yeah. don't, don't like. I, I, you know, yeah. I agree with John. It's, it's going to be a split reaction. He's going to see a line and he's going to think someone stepped out of bounds. And um, it would be I interesting to. It would be interesting to find out how they feel and whether, especially if they've been refereeing at other courts, where all the towns in the area are going through the same thing. Where maybe a few months ahead of some of the surrounding towns. You know, Uxbridge is gearing up to go indoors now for the winter. Nobody wants to play indoors. They all want to play outdoors. So we're looking for something for the seniors to do for recreation indoors in the wintertime. Uh, Is the activity done during the day or the sessions? Yeah, um, 8 to 12, Monday and Wednesday mornings, and I think it's 5 to 9 on Sundays. After we are from, your we, yeah, we are. We are from mornings are a great time, right? The gym's not used. I gave mm -hmm. them some, I told them we worked a way to fit a night in for them on Sunday nights, and once we get to the spring, mm -hmm. we can probably take multiple nights if they want to. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and that I doesn't. I think in the spring everybody's going out again because there's plenty of courts. Kind of, oh, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're going out and basketball yeah. ends, so yeah. the gym will go back <laughs> not to being used yeah. very much, unfortunately. But um, do you know how many of the multiple people are playing are actually does Douglas residents? Uh, we have that list. I would say out of 24, probably 12, about half, 50 percent. Yeah. And uh, and they get first them. dibs. The Douglas people have signed up at the beginning and others can sign up but if they, they know if there's a Douglas person waiting to play Douglas person gets first dibs on on making the list uh, back to 
you have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you say there's some um, misplaced equipment. Can you know what it is? Yeah. Because I would definitely bring that up to Dick. I did. And he, oh, you did. he pretty no, oh, I know. He, oh. he said they moved everything to the next shelf. There was an electric pump and air pump in there that has been oh, missing since good. he moved in. It was right on that shelf where the pickleball stuff ended up. So we've been through that now a couple times and haven't been able to find it. So we res resorted to hand pumping for now, but um, no, that I, that well, that was the one thing. It, you know, to be bluntly honest, it's not super organized in there. Or whatever, it's just that's one thing people use. Is they come in, their balls a little flat from the cold, and they oh, yeah, they pump it up. So uh, I've been through there a couple times. I did mention it to Dick, and he said everything that was on that shelf was put on a, a, a next a shelf consecutive shelf next to it, and it's definitely not there. So maybe we can look, yeah. take a look tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. So. How long has the tape that's there been down now? The original tape? It is. About six, the second six week weeks, we played. Say, the second six week weeks. we played, it went down. Yes. Yeah, six weeks, I think it's about right. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you saw some other um, stuff online, because we've looked, and most of the stuff that we've seen online that you can take down and put up is. Um, is uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Slippery. Yeah, <laughs> Glossy. It, yeah, it can't, it's, it's not adhesive enough that if you step or slide on it, you're going, your legs are going to go out from under you. If it's what we've used and what we've looked at, that's comparable. So, you know, um, the stuff that goes down easily comes up readily after each play is probably more dangerous than we want to actually be liable for. Everybody signed a waiver, but uh, you don't want someone getting hurt. Absolutely. You know? So, um, can I offer this suggestion to you? Um, you're starting up the league next week. The kids this, start playing this, this weekend. This weekend. This weekend. Um, can we give it a couple of weeks and set, see how they adapt to it? I've been doing this 20 years. I've never played on a court with tape lines. So you're talking oh, I'm sure. yeah. 300 it's games, good. 500 games. I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I would not be in favor of that. I, I, to be bluntly honest, again, I, I, I feel like we gave you six weeks of trying to come up with some alternatives and, uh, you know, you just seem to be pushing back. So it, it seems like a, a disagreement and, you know, I would prefer the tape come up before the weekend games. That's my preference. Um, You're not willing to give it a try then? I am not. I, I thought I'd been very fair in giving you as much time as you needed, closet time. Six weeks ago, I said, Dick, this is a temporary solution. At the Recreation Commission meeting, we suggested, this is a temporary solution. Can we find something else? And I, it doesn't seem we have a temporary solution. I'm not sure one has been, how much time has been spent on one or not. But um, this is where we are, unfortunately. It's a, a, how do the rest of you feel? You don't want to give it a try? It, for me, it's a, he's the one that does the program with the, with the basketball, so he would, be, he would be the one I would refer to um, on the court. I just I don't, you know, I'm not out there knowing um, what goes on there, and Brian is the one that handles that part of it for me. I mean, I played basketball. I grew up in that gym. And starting in kindergarten, it's like even just with the volleyball lines and stuff, just trying to figure get your bearings when you're in there and trying to throw all these other lines as a five-year-old could get confusing. I haven't seen that, um, but I can attest to the crazy parents, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, th you wouldn't think a fourth-grade basketball game. Or maybe that's young. Yeah, sixth, seventh, eighth-grade basketball game would be as uh, intense as it can be, and um, Ryan's raising a concern. I, I can see, um, I can see and appreciate his concerns. How close to the baseline are these? Are they parallel? I know, but uh, not that close to the baseline. Closer to the sidelines. Sidelines is, is probably the issue. It's probably a couple of feet from the sidelines. So I wasn't being rude, but I did Google while I was listening. I did Google 
some products. Uh, I haven't done a ton of search on it, but um, there are there are products out there that that may work. Um, would it be something? You have three quarts, mm -hmm. and you don't want to go like parallel or par parallelogram. You know, I wouldn't do that. Um, and the issue that you guys have is the time it takes to lay the tape down is prohibitive. Uh, every time? If you have to do it every time. It's, it's yeah. I forget exactly how long it I think it took them like an hour and a half to lay it. Because you've got to measure it. Yeah. I mean. So to get it laid down, yeah. It takes it time consuming. Of course. You would think. You know, are you willing to, if we could put some sort of blue dot or something on each of the corners to help speed up the taping process so you wouldn't have to measure every time? Oh. That would be probably acceptable. I'd have to see what that looked like, but um, you know, some sort of small X or, or something just to speed up the process. Yeah, so you're not playing with the tape measure the whole time. Right. I assume we can speed it up, but again, it, it I seems done like it. it seems like you it's becoming restrictive use for basketball only and ignore all the other sports that can be Played inside by the townspeople. I don't agree with that at all. I, I'm more than willing, given up time in the gym, and it's not my decision. But you asked for a morning, I gave you a morning. You asked a second for a morning, I said that's great. You asked for an evening, I said that's great. The only thing I oppose of is how you're taping the floor, right? If you want to find a temporary solution, put the lines down. You can put them down on Sunday night, pick them up on Wednesday morning after you're done, right? There's no games in between those times. I'm more than happy to do that. I, I just oppose them on the floor. And I, and I don't agree at all that basketball <laughs> is in charge. I feel like I've given a first space. And I'll be space. honest, I, I played, we use it for softball in there for our captain's practices and what have you. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not restricted just to basketball. I think I did high school soccer practices in there when it was super cold and stuff. So it's. Oh, yeah, practicing in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that time frame again, uh, leaving the lines from Sunday night till Wednesday morning? Yeah, yeah, if you keep the current schedule or, so I, I just need the lines up for the weekends really. Um, right, the weekends are when the young kids play on Saturday and then the serious, more serious travel games are played on Sundays. So if, you know, right now it's going to be a little bit of a tricky wicket on Sunday night because we're probably not out of there till 4:30, so I don't. That would cut into your your time on Sunday nights. That'd be one of the, one of the yeah. issues when putting it up. Do but, that, but yeah, there would probably be some Sundays where we wouldn't be the majority. We're there till 4:30, which yeah, is why. Sometimes you have to wake in the end of the. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, but I picked that time specifically five o'clock because I didn't want you guys sitting there waiting to go, and the game goes into triple overtime. I was confident we'd be out of there by 4:30 and have the gym picked up for you and everything on Sunday nights. And if there was a way to put the corner dots or X's or whatever, you know, maybe in mm -hmm. 40 minutes you can have the three courts taped off, you know, and then you're good for the three days. Mm -hmm. Until the permanent solution, until we can get the floor sanded and repainted, with the, you know, until we get a permanent solution. I mean, we got to compromise, we're trying to compromise so everyone wins. Yeah, that's, ideally that's, uh, it would be permanent lines painted. You know. So, but that's not. But that won't yeah, happen I mean, in the next month or two. Right. So, yeah. You know. And I think did Dick last time mention some sort of grant money? I don't know what you guys get, but I know that there's grants for literally everything. So maybe try and look at a grant to get some more money to redo the floor sooner than the 15-year mark. Yeah, well, we don't get any grants at the senior center. We've been trying for years. But some sort of like recreation grants or something like that that we can all look into, or it's just there's a lot of money out there that no one really knows about. So. I'm just the town trying to think on 
on our end right now we're spending a half hour setting up and a half hour cleaning up and taking down the nets and putting everything away each time we play. Mm -hmm. And now if we have to find, I don't want to ask the same seniors who are doing that to be putting, come in a half hour earlier and put down tape and pick tape up. Or what if you say to the people that don't live in Douglas, hey, if you want to play, come an hour earlier and help us set up the courts. <laughs> I would also say, I mentioned to Dick that Sunday nights he could keep the stuff up for Monday morning play. There was nobody in there Sunday nights and Monday, Monday mornings. Too. He told me he was Wednesday. doing that maybe, he was not, not till Wednesday, till Monday. So there's basketball practices during the week. But one of the reasons Sunday nights I thought was attractive to him was he kept all the nets and stuff up on Sunday night and then uh, for, Monday, for Monday, and then you were back playing Monday morning. That, that's how I understood it. I haven't, right, I don't know so one way or the other. You, you're saying you would like to tape up by so I will pull it up on, fr I've got Friday off to get the gym set up. I'm happy to do it on Friday myself. But after that, I'd like it up by, f by Friday, I guess Friday during the day at some point. So when I would assume you guys move to different days, but on the current schedule, it seems to make the most sense you get it up Wednesday after you play. Right, so from Sunday night to Wednesday, okay. Yeah, yeah, there are no games. It's just practice. It's the older kids. Is this painter's tape? That's just what it looks like, same color. It's yeah. that medium light blue. Um, yeah, sort of this color. Yeah. So I, I think we have a pretty good consensus that I think the tape will, will come up. I'll send Dick a note on Friday that, I, that I'll pull it up on Friday after play. Um, and if you guys want to reach out to us with any kind of solutions, temporary solutions, whatever, you want to talk more about the dots on the corner, how we that make work, I can certainly meet with him and try to figure out how to do that. Now, the other thing too is, you know, no baseball field is exactly the same, right? So does it have to be exact or can the middle court be a little wavy? All right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, give me a chalk line in two minutes, and I'll give you a line. Don't call him to do your lines. Yeah. Like in earnest. I mean, if there were dots and connected points, right, and it veered off two inches. I mean, you know, it, if you hit the ball inside that extra two, you're happy. If you miss, you like the stupid line. But whatever. <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't, I don't, I understand the extra leg work, um, but it sounds like the disruptive nature of the existing lines um, kind of warrants to hold firm there. Okay, I suspect that um, when we meet tomorrow morning to play, we'll be having a powwow <laughs> to uh, present this uh, uh, to those who show up. And are you going to send Dick a, a note? I will say, Dick, and I'll include all you, Dick. Is it Pam who's Pam? away? No, it's not Pam. It's Donna. Donna who's away. She's on there, too. They both reached out that they couldn't make it tonight. So yeah, I will let them know, maybe not tonight, but maybe tomorrow morning, what our decision was and okay. how we would move forward. And like I said, I'll pull the tape. I'd, like I'd actually like to pull the tape up myself just to see, what, see what? what's left down there. And I'll mm -hmm. take pictures if it's, if, if it's you know not doing well um, there was some uh, there was some sticky stuff on there which I thought was but it ended up being from the town uh, the election rugs or something it caused a little you know, so um, and so you know uh, good news is I guess the floor will get two good scrubs <laughs> we'll get two good scrubs this weekend and then you'll be ready to go Sunday night if that's what you want to do okay All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your time. I will keep looking. All right. And Thank uh, you. If you. If you have any uh, suggestions on those grants, yeah, I can. I'm.
literally home from work because of my leg, so I can so do some research and send it over to Ryan and he can and Eric. send it out. It yeah. 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 So, so the other thing I may recommend is we have a relatively new, a couple years, economic development coordinator, Bob McNair. I'm not sure that's his exact title, but he has been really successful getting economic development grants. What's his name? Bob McNair. So maybe he may not, he's probably not aware of the grants, but if you find the grants, he may be able to give you some pointers on how to write them. A lot of it has to do with specific words, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> maturing citizen population, or yeah, yeah. I, I would assume that's, that would be a big one with the elected officials, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, um, but he knows all the key, he's done a bunch from now, so I'm sure he's got all the key words and points yeah. to make to, to help make any application successful. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, number two on the warrant is the fiscal 2024 budget discussion. Um, at the last meeting, John mentioned about possibly requesting the town increase our budget. And I was giving that a little bit of thought, and I was trying to come up with, if I was in front of the finance committee, what would we say we were going to spend that money on? Well, I made some notes, so I can answer some of that. Perfect. That's just what I wanted to see. Um, back when we had all our big cuts, uh, Tim, was 2010, yep. we had a rec budget of $34,000 a year. I had a couple of summer employees cutting grass for us and what have you. We were able to do some capital stuff. Uh, and now we pay the electric bill. So we have 600 bucks to fix a fence or fix a mower or whatever it may be. You know, and I'm starting to see some of our buildings go downhill a little bit. I mean, you know, baseball, softball charges a fee. They're not making any money to build up to repair roofs and what have you. And I think it's time to try to start. I know at Mountain Road, two dugouts need roofs. Um, the concession stand is right all around the, the door. And I know the famous word is we'll get the volunteers. Well, here's the volunteers. So the same people that are on recreation that are, you know, the guys that coach and gals that coach and what have you. So, you know, if we can start. My thought was to ask for ten thousand dollars to start doing some repairs and get, you know, get some of our stuff back in shape the way it should be. You know, if, if we don't ask it, we won't know. You know, and then, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I know from three to ten is a big jump, but from thirty-four down to three is a big cut. Mm -hmm. So, you know. <clears throat> okay. So maybe, maybe part of the solution is. Um, asking the individual organizations what projects they might might need you know just to kind of be very general about things that need done makes me nervous in terms of asking for money from the town I'd be nervous about finding out what they want I've seen this list. Oh, well. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know. I'm like, this is not like. No, what do we need? Well, 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 no, no. I'm talking about that, that, that whole building. Sure. Uh, when we have our meetings for baseball, those windows are. Sure, even, that's what I'm saying. They're not that's, even like how to get out of the ball and stuff. Like, they put an air conditioning and they feel like it's going to fall out the window. Like, we wouldn't like, be doing our uh, duty as rec members if we don't at least try something. Yeah. <clears throat> and it is a town building the, um, itself. and we know what water damage can cost. Um, the roof there alone, I thought of putting that on capital and getting it on a list just to have that discussion. Um, uh, soccer may need some stuff. A uh, basketball program may need some stuff. You know, just uh, my thought is if we don't ask, we won't know. You know, and if, it's, if it's a no, it's a no. But again, we're doing our due diligence as a rep board to at least ask. Okay. And some of the fiscal constraints of years past may be lessening too. We may do well to be on the forefront of that um, shift. Does anyone have any connection to those who walk on the paths in town? And I, I feel like sometimes we, we're all kind of connected to the youth sports here in town, but that's part of recreation too. And I'd be wondering how do I reach out to that population and get what they may may need. I don't know if anyone has any I ideas on that. Because that's a lot of the huge majority mm -hmm. of they have their own BS, I think it's BSTRA. The oh. Bay State Trail Riders. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're one of the organizations that do that. They do like their runs and their um, fundraising. 
I like two two walking clubs. Um, yeah, I don't a lot of people use the trail, obviously. Right. You know. Did they end up paving that, or do we think that? No, that has um, been um, the enthusiasm from the state is tempered on that. Yeah. Okay. So they didn't do it at all. No. No. Okay. The other piece too, a lot of that, whatever trails are out there, are state owned. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like ninety-five percent. Yeah. Just like every road, right? Mm -hmm. Our part of the road, like where the our, yeah, yeah. You know that one that's probably not southeast. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll give it some more thought. Um, I think I have a finance yeah. committee, committee meeting uh, next Tuesday, so I will bring that up as to how to get on their agenda going forward in the winter. To yeah. And you shouldn't be alone on that. I think the five of us could um, easily um, stand behind you as you make the case for us. <laughs> I was thinking someone else might be in front. I can stay. I might zoom into that one, Ryan. <laughs> Did you want estimates? Like, did you want suggestions? Because, like, I know I can talk to Nick Nathan for the baseball side. Um, I'm sure we know someone from the soccer. I'm sure I can find someone from the soccer or, or those types of things, like to kind of get an idea of where this money is going to be spent. Yeah, I'm okay on those two. Um, both are basketball coaches. The soccer president's my assistant called basketball coach. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I'm more concerned about anything else in town that might might need it. That's why I mentioned the, the pathway and the playgrounds. I mean, do the playgrounds know who, who, I mean, the one at Martin Road is not, the one at Martin Road is not, certainly not what it was when my kids, the pirate ship is no longer. And, you know, but uh, we do, through the highway budget, do wood chips there. Okay. Uh, you know. Could you maybe take a look at what kind of quality those are? I mean, I'm not a good judge of whether they're, I guess I can, I can yeah, tell if they're got, rusting, but if yeah, they need improvements or that sort yeah. of thing. So we just, we've got the one at Martin Road, we've got the one at North Street. Yep. Do we have any others? No, I think the rest belong to the school. Right, belong to the schools, so okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I guess if anyone's watching, want something part of the recreation, please let us know. Um, you can find my email on the basketball website if you're looking. Um, anything else on the fiscal 24 budget discussion? Okay. Um, as basketball was opening up this weekend, I did not have time for the meeting minutes, so we'll have to postpone that till next time. Um, does anyone have any topics not reasonably, reasonably anticipated 40 hours in advance of the meeting? Okay. Well, just a quick update. Sure. Um, the movie folks have left town, um, and I think they are quite happy with um, the Soldiers Field facility and how the shoot went. Um, we did allow them the use of uh, electricity, um, and I've been working with Gene. We're going to become whole. Once we do the final math, um, they will pay the for any overage that they used over the month and 15 days or so that uh, that they were down there um, so that's one of the uh, areas that I was wanted to really hone in on um, their filming and the town was kind enough to let Soldiers Field be their playground for 40 some odd days but it shouldn't cost the townspeople anything and that will be uh, rectified uh, once we get the next month's bill just to confirm that there was no um, late overage. Great. Any uh, estimate on when the movie will be produced and where we could find it? That yeah, um, potentially in the summer, most likely the fall after they go through the film festival circuit, um, but I'm told it will be something that you will be able to see, whether it be on the big screen or Netflix or right. Apple TV or whatever it might be. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Okay. All right. If not, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made by John, seconded by Tim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Have a good night.